something very enigmatic happened over the ocean near Papua New Guinea in 2014. So enigmatic that for many years this event was classified by the Department of Defense of the United States of America. Only the last year the DOD declassified their data. What exactly happened there? Learn some of the answers in this episode of my weekly podcast, Astro Edge. Are you ready? Engage! Welcome to Astro Edge, weekly broadcast presenting highlights of leading edge research in astronomy and astrophysics. Today's paper is localizing the first interstellar meteor with seismometer data. The first author is Amir Siraj. The second author is famous astrophysicist Abi Loeb. They're both from Harvard University Department of Astronomy. If you go outside, in the middle of the night, far away from city lights, with clear skies, you let your eyes adapt to the darkness. You spend 10-15 minutes and then you will see clearly lots of stars, you'll see Milky Way and you'll start seeing shooting stars or meteors. What are meteors? These are tiny pieces of interplanetary dust or tiny rocks which fly into the Earth atmosphere and burn up there. Before they enter the Earth atmosphere, they are called meteoroids, and we call meteor the shooting star effect. The effect which happens when these tiny pieces of dust fly through the atmosphere at very high speed, tens of kilometers per second, and most of them burn up high in the atmosphere. So why there is interplanetary dust? Where does it come from? There are lots of large rocks orbiting in the solar system. They're called asteroids. These rocks occasionally collide. They hit each other and some of them break up. That produces lots of dust between planets. There are also lots of comets. It's a basically dirty snowball flying through the solar system. When they approach the sun, the ice starts evaporating, releasing the tiny pieces of dust embedded in the ice. That's another source of interplanetary dust in the solar system. Some of these objects are larger than just pieces of dust. They might be larger rocks weighing maybe kilograms or hundreds of kilograms. When they burn up in the atmosphere, they create very, very bright fireballs called bolid. Some of them are large enough that they survive the passage through the Earth's atmosphere. They explode, they fall into multiple pieces, and some of these pieces may fall on the Earth's surface. Chelyabinsk meteor did just that in Russia in 2013. The subject of this paper is a fairly large meteor, a meter scale, which exploded in the Earth's atmosphere off the coast of Papua New Guinea in 2014, resulting in a huge fireball. One very interesting point about this meteor, what makes it so special, this event, the explosion of the meteor, was classified by the Department of Defense of the United States. It was declassified only recently. And the reason it was classified, because it was an interstellar meteor, the first of its kind discovered. Interstellar means that it came from outside of the, our solar system. There are only a few objects discovered so far which are known to have come from the interstellar space. One of them is the famous, the very first interstellar asteroid Oumuamua. I did my own research on this object, showing that its shape is most likely a disk or a slab, not a cigar as commonly assumed. This was soon followed by the second interstellar asteroid or rather comet called Borisov. So how do we know that an object came from interstellar space and not a part of our solar system? As you can see from this diagram, objects which are part of our solar system are orbiting Sun, which is at the center here, following elliptical orbits. Some of these orbits are almost circular, like Earth orbit. Other orbits are more elongated or elliptic, like comet orbits. 
Oumuamua orbit was nothing like that. As you can see here, it came in at such a high speed that it was moving essentially at straight line. Then it passed close to Sun, made a U-turn and move out into the interstellar space, again, almost at a straight line. So this wasn't an elliptic orbit. It is a shape called hyperbola. Interstellar objects are expected to follow hyperbolas. They would not follow elliptic orbits. Only objects belonging to the solar system follow elliptical orbits. This is how scientists can tell if a certain object came from the space between stars and is not a part of the solar system. So why was this object classified for many years? We wouldn't know for sure, but I strongly suspect this object was determined to be an interstellar object and there was a suspicion this might not be a natural object. This might be sort of a UFO, unidentified line object, an artificial in origin. I don't think this is the case for this object. I would say 99% this is something natural, but the very fact that this is the very first interstellar meteor detected crashing into the Earth atmosphere makes it extremely, extremely interesting. As the object was fairly large, there is a fairly good possibility that it wasn't completely destroyed in the blast. It is possible that parts and fragments of this object fell from the sky into the ocean. There are actually plans now to send an expedition to search for those fragments. The problem is from the data from the Department of Defense, just based on the light from the explosion, we cannot localize very well the possible location of the fragments in the ocean. With the data we have, we would have to search a fairly large area of the ocean floor, around 100 square kilometers or 40 square miles. So the chances of finding of the fragments of the interstellar objects are very, very small. So what the authors of this paper did, they found seismic data about that event. When a such large explosion happens, it is normal to expect that the ground will be shaking. There will be some sound waves, shock waves, going through the air, through the ocean, through water, and through the land. There are lots of seismic sensors spread out around the world, which main purpose is to detect earthquakes. It happened that one of those sensors managed to record the explosion from the interstellar meteor in 2014. So this is what this seismic sensor recorded around that time. It recorded two main events. Here's the first event and pay attention. Here are seconds. So first boom, explosion boom lasted around 100 seconds and moment zero corresponds to the time when the optical explosion, the flash was detected. And then there was a second echo, which was actually slightly louder than the first one and which happened 300 seconds or five minutes after the explosion. So why there are two booms recorded from a single explosion? And the authors provide a fairly simple explanation for that. Here's the fireball. This is where explosion happened. It was fairly high above the ocean surface. Here's the location of the seismometer, the sensor, which recorded the double booms. Here's the ocean in blue. The ground is in brown. This is the ocean floor and also the part of the land where seismometer is located. When a large explosion happens, how can we hear it? There are actually a few different paths a sound can take to reach our ears or to reach sensors. The reason for that is that the sound propagates through air at quite a bit slower pace than it does through the water and even less so than it does through the ground. So you would think the most obvious way to hear the boom would be through a direct line through the air, but because sound propagates slower through the air, we will hear the first boom sooner than that. For example, sound can reach the ocean surface relatively quickly because it's fairly close to the ocean surface. And then it will travel through the water or through the ground at a much faster pace than it's doing here through the air. So the sound of the boom is still traveling through the air, but we already heard the boom through the water or the ground. There are also possibilities sound can be reflected from the ocean surface. So the explanation for the first boom is the sound traveling mostly through the water and the ground. There is some interesting point here. It's not very loud, but there was something instantly at the moment of the flash. How was it even possible? It takes time for sound to reach the sensor. 
It cannot be instantaneous. Only light can move pretty much instantaneously. The earthers speculate this might be electrophonic noise which the sensor recorded the moment the flash happened. Electrophonic noise from meteors or bullets is a controversial topic. It's sort of a gray area. What this web page describes, there are some historic reports of people hearing meteors or bullets the moment they appear in the sky, even though they're tens of kilometers away. So for the sound, it would take many minutes to reach your ears. This is not a solid science, but one theory is that when something burns up in the atmosphere, it creates variable electric field and magnetic field. These fields propagate super fast, as fast as light. And it is just possible that these variable electric or magnetic fields make objects around the sensor or around our ears vibrate. And that's what we hear as electrophonic noise. So again, the first boom here was due to sound traveling mostly through the water and land. The speed of sound is much higher when it travels through water and ground. The second boom would correspond to the sound traveling through the air. And the reason it's so stretched out because there are different paths the sound can take through the air. It can go straight or it can get reflected from the water at different points. So what did researchers do? They made a fairly sophisticated model which describes how a sensor can hear a sound from an explosion over the ocean surface, including all those possible paths for the sound to come to the sensor directly or through a reflection from the water surface. The best fitting model is shown here in orange. As you can see, it follows the actual data pretty nicely. So this is a fairly convincing model of what happened. By fine-tuning the model to the data, they managed to recover two important three model parameters. One is the ground distance from the explosion, which is 93.5 kilometers. As you can see, they measured it with very high accuracy. This is critical for this research, with the accuracy of one half kilometer. Another very important parameter they measured was the height. At what height the explosion took place over the ocean surface. It is 7.4 kilometers and again with very high accuracy, 0.4 kilometers. So here's the main result of this paper. This is the ocean surface where explosion took place. The optical sensor detected that explosion took place around this area. And this is a very large area, 100 square kilometers or 40 square miles. Impractical to search thoroughly. The seismic data allowed these researchers to make a model which predicted that explosion took place along this blue stripe. The important part is that the stripe intersects the area where, according to the optical sensors, explosion took place. There is a very small brown area here where these two areas overlap. Only within this very small area, it would be possible to satisfy both the optical observations of the flash and the seismic data analyzed by the present paper. That suggests that the actual explosion took place around this area. This is a much smaller area than this large square, and it is actually feasible to search the ocean floor around this location. But there was also another interesting outcome of this research. Their model allowed them to calculate the strength of the meteor. And the way one can do that by estimating how far meteor can travel into the thick layers of the atmosphere before it explodes, falls apart. The longer it can travel, the stronger material it's built from. The very interesting result here is the strength of this interstellar meteor is much, much higher than strength of normal solar system meteors. Why would it be the case? In one of the earlier papers, the same researchers suggested that supernovas these are dying stars exploding at the end of their lifetime, perhaps can produce iron-rich bullets, which could be a possible origin of this interstellar meteor. Even more exciting, but I would say very unlikely possibility for this extraordinary strength of this material, that perhaps this is not a natural object. Who knows? In conclusion, the very enigmatic, very first interstellar meteor 
which exploded over the ocean surface in 2014, may have left some fragments, which perhaps we can discover. There is an expedition plan to recover the fragments. This research paper makes huge contribution to the success of that future expedition by improving the accuracy, localizing the area where these fragments should be searched for. Another very exciting result of the paper is that the strength of this object appears to be extremely high, much higher than anything we observe from natural meteors. Who knows what it can be? The expedition will hopefully tell us. Great research, great results in my book, it does have an edge. I'd really love to get a feedback from you, so please leave a comment down below. Also, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. See you next time.